All right, and we're live. Welcome back to another Corona Geek here on Google+, Plus, where we talk all about mobile app development using Corona SDK. I'm your host, Charles McKeever, and I'm joined by Brian Burton. Hi, Hello. Brian. Good to see everybody. It's good to see you, too. Brian is a professor down in Abilene and uh, also a author of Corona SDK books and developer extraordinaire. Thanks for, for being with us today, Brian. We've got a little bit of feedback going on. It always happens right there at the last moment. That's right. Yeah. Also joining us is Ed Marina. <laughs> Head goofball and proprietor of uh, roaminggamer.com where he makes uh, game templates and what else do you make there? Have you have you how's the SSK going? Oh, it's fine. I mean, I, I maintain it. I haven't committed a new version for some time. I've been doing some cleaning, but um, occasionally I, I commit a new version. I got you. Well, he's got tools for us there at uh, roaminggamer.com. It makes uh, game development a little bit easier for us here in the Corona community, so go check that out. Also joining us is uh, Hanson Johnson. How's it going, man? <laughs> we can't hear you. You might be muted. But it's always great to have everybody here on the show. So, uh, so today we're going to talk about what are we going to talk about today, guys? More special effects. More special effects. We're going to talk about raining and lightning. So that's going to be a good little talk. Uh, we've got a couple of sample codes that we're going to walk through, uh, and that should be uh, interesting. We got a little bit of feedback. That that just kind of stinks, doesn't it? Let me see if I, I can. When that happens. Yeah, you said that already. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, just a second. Uh, it's the feedback. <laughs> I'm hoping. I'm not hearing anything on this end. You don't, you don't hear it on that end. No, no feedback. That's okay. It's just those Labor Day techno uh, technology snafus. All right, well, let's get on into it here. Before we jump into the, the code examples, uh, I want to talk a little bit about this uh, Two Aces Blackjack game tutorial. Okay. Ed, that's your cue. Oh, that would be my cue <laughs> if I weren't on mute. Sorry about that. Yeah, so uh, cut my start about two months ago was taking on partner templates. So... As you may know, I make game templates, and I'm bringing up the thing here. If my website is not going to bail out on me at this very moment, which it may very well be doing, seems like it is. Okay, we got no website, so I'll reboot that. <laughs> anyway, this, this never fails. Technology failure as we go. So as you may know, I have developed several... Um, game development templates for Corona, and a couple months ago I started to take on partners, and the template that you're talking about, do you have a link for it, Charles? The video? Uh, uh, no, but I'll get one while you're talking. Okay, so um, I have uh, an individual, Martin Edmier, and I'm probably not saying his name correctly, he's a German guy, and he has produced a few templates, and that is his latest one, it's a blackjack template. I really wish I could show this to you, but of course, my Hold server on. crashed this very moment. Hold on, I got it. All right, I'm There's rebooting. Everybody's rebooting. It takes a it, it takes a village to raise to, to bring up a. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a village to bring up a website. All right, no, it does. All right, Hold on. rebooting. And there we go. Well, while we're rebooting. Um, yeah. I've got an announcement. Go, the, go, Brian. Uh, the beginning mobile application development textbook and mobile application development with Corona SDK ebook have both been updated. I've added a new chapter on using the system tools like GPS, accelerometer, um, all, all those cool little toys. So they're available. Um, the PDF version of the new update is now available through my website. All you got to do is go to the books update link, and you will you should have no problem uh, downloading it. If you do, send me an email. So they're both updated. Um, there's something new, I think, in just about every single chapter of the book. So it is a major update. It's been six months in the, in the development. So you can do that. I will be getting the EPUB and Mobi versions updated 
just give me another couple of days so that I can get that conversion taken care of. Excellent. Yeah, that's been a little, we've been waiting waiting for that, and uh, that's a lot of hard work. It, it there there was well, it was like I said, something got changed in every single chapter of the book, so it it is a major update. Uh, the learning mobile application development, which is for the non-programmer who wants to get started with Corona, is I'm, I'm busy on that final chapter. Classes have started, so things have slowed down a little bit on my writing, but I am hard at work at it. Should be work finished here in the next week or two. Excellent, excellent. All right, Ed, did you get that to come up? I'm frantically clicking. <laughs> yes, I did get it to come up. Am I not muted? Good. Excellent. Let's see. So I brought up. Well, this is just not going to work for me, is it? I don't know. You want me to not share my screen so you don't have uh, your, your... There you go. Okay. Good enough. I was going to show you the game. <clears throat> like I said, I've got several um, game templates for Corona developers. And among these is the Two Aces which is a simple implementation of Blackjack, which I would really love to show either the game or a video. But for some reason, the simulator window is not working as I try to display it here. Did you bring up the uh, video on YouTube? I did, and I'm going to go ahead and show that. Okay, we have a nice profile image of me looking over at my other desktop. Excellent. It's a it's a very good demo. That's, that's the reason I want to. Yeah. Show it. So uh, uh, Martin did this, and he sent it to me. And basically, what I did was I, I gave it a once over just to uh, see if it was up to date. I made a couple of changes and had him okay them, and then we published it. And I will just go ahead and play the video here. Okay, so this is a, uh, I don't know how to play uh, blackjack, but... but so. Yeah, so it's a, uh, the way this, this game works is, is it starts off, you, what is going on? <laughs> Technical. Okay, we're going to walk, th walk through it with no video now. You choose your bet by clicking on the chips. There it is. It's refreshing slowly. And then once you've selected the bet that you want, you go ahead and click the OK button over here, and it throws in your first set of cards. You get dealt some cards. Then you get to choose a hit or a stand. So if you haven't played 21 or blackjack, a hit means give me another card. Stand means I'm good. So at this point, we've got 13. We'd really like to get a little closer to 21. So I think I'm going to choose. Oh, I chose to stand. Not a very good. Oh, I chose to hit. There we go. Got 16. So when you get to 16 with 21, that's the point where you say, I better hold where I'm at. It's a decision point. That's a hard one. So I think I'll stand. And I think in this, this instance, I'm going to lose. Yep. That went by kind of fast. But the, uh, the house got... 20, beats me, I lost my money. So anyways, that's the way this game works, and you just continue on with your betting and your hit or stand decision, and everything else is taken care of by the game logic. Very nice, and so this is a, this is a template, so all of the graphics and everything are provided, sounds and all that? Everything, uh, right. So the background music you're hearing is for the video only. There's no background music in this game. I do okay. this with all my videos, and I probably... I think, yes. So I put a little uh, disclaimer here. Not a disclaimer, but a uh, license statement. So when I make videos, generally, uh, if the game doesn't come with a soundtrack, I, I play a soundtrack in the video just to make the video a little nicer. Gotcha. Okay. So if someone wanted to add their own audio, they could. It wouldn't be a big, big deal anyway. No, really easy. I mean, it's one or two lines of code. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Right. Well, that's very Thank nice. You. Thank you for yeah, struggling. More struggling profile through. pictures here. <laughs> Not unless I'm wearing a silly hat. Okay, good. You know, we, we did that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump into. We got. Our, I think we got our announcements. I'm kind of flipping between screens here.
Uh, I've got just as many technical issues going on as you. Uh, so last week we did uh, a review of the jumping code. So we had the character on the screen, and we had him jumping back and forth and walked through all that. So if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch that. Um, uh, Ed did a great job of going through looking at the in-depth uh, physics on that. And um, so that was kind of what the tutorial that kind of kicked off the series here, I, I think. Uh, uh, hold, hold on just a Hanson, could you mute your mic? I think the feedback is coming through your, your end. Let's see here. Let's see. If we mute, mute that, I think we'll, we'll stop. Thank you. Okay. Let's try, let's try that again. Yeah. I know that feed, it's hard to talk when you got the feedback happening. Yeah, it's hard to think. I, I, I'll have to share that video with you later. There's a couple of guys on YouTube who did that where you uh, you basically record yourself talking and then you try to say the same thing, but you play it at a, at a delay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Ed? Are we okay? I think so. Can you hear me? No, you lagged out for a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be an interesting show. Okay, so Ed, tell us where they can get the uh, the library. The, what was the Math 2D library? I think it was from yes, the, pre the I'm previous. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the link and show you that. Okay, somebody asked for that last time. Uh, they liked that that we went through the code and and explained everything, but they just wanted to know where to get the library. Yeah. So there's two places you can get that. Um, you can go over to. I'm making it. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, because you your end's lagging out. I'm getting robo roboto voice from you. So sorry about that. All right. Uh, yes. So the question was: Is where can I get the Math 2D library? First, if you see something on the show and I talked about the code or uh, had comments. At, from now on, I'm going to go ahead and post whatever code we can from from the show to um, my free stuff. So uh, go over to GitHub, look for Roman Gamer, and under there you'll find a project called uh, Roman Gamer Free Stuff, RG Free Stuff. And under there, I've got a folder called Corona Geek, where you'll find folders for each of the different Hangouts, which I can see this is probably a little bit hard to read. Um, and so that was Hangout 52. And in Hangout 52, I've got posted three different versions of the code. And in version 2 and version 3, we use the um, Math 2D library. So if I click down there, you'll find the 2D library that was used on the last show. <clears throat> Additionally, I have several other projects under GitHub. And one of those is SSK Corona, which is the whole toolkit. So the Math 2D library is just a small part of um, several extensions and additions that I made to the Corona base. Um, and so you can just head over here, and you'll find a folder called SSK. And there's a readme here that says teaches you how to install it. And that's about it. Uh, there's also a wiki to go with this. Um, where is it? They change their interface every once in a while. So if you go to the SSK Corona page and it's click there on, on the, the wiki, it's there. yeah, there it's there on the right. Yeah, you'll get um, the index. And so I added a bunch of global functions and variables. Uh, I extended the um, string library, the table library, and some others. And then I added a bunch of classes, among which was the 2D math class. So it, it supports uh, vector addition. Uh, Cartesian coordinate uh, conversion because um, this is a little technical, but Corona doesn't use the Cartesian system. It uses a the standard uh, raster uh, top is uh, zero zero and zero. Uh, positive x works to the right and positive y works downward, which is the opposite of Cartesian, where positive y is up. Anyway, it's a technical thing. You can find more libraries here on GitHub, um, a button factory, some other cool stuff, a collision calculator, some debug tools, etc., etc. I'll let folks dig in there. 
and, and they should dig into this. This is some really good stuff that's available to us. You know, uh, otherwise you're going to when, when, if you become a serious developer, you're going to eventually need all of these routines. And the fact that Ed's made these available, you know, you really, really can save yourself a lot of development time if you go ahead and, and start using these from the very beginning. I appreciate that, and I agree, not to pat my own back, but I use these every day. I use them on my client projects, and it saves me a ton of time. Very cool. Yeah, we, we need to get you back and explain some of that sometime. Go through back through the you know the library because we had yeah, you. I'd be glad to do a short segment on just like what what's in there so folks know. We should because I think when originally uh, when you were on the show the first time way back months months and months ago, uh, we just talked about in general terms kind of the overview of what it was and how it got started and why you created it and stuff like that. But we never really dug into the actual meat of it, so it would be good. Yeah, that'd be that. fun actually yeah. to do a little segment and show. I could easily put together um, a sampling so people could see the things in action. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I, correct me if, you're wrong, if I'm wrong, that most of your templates included, right? You do a pure play Corona right. version and then you do an SSK version? Right. So to clarify what you're saying or to uh, reiterate, almost all of my game tape templates come with what is called a pure version which does not use any special libraries or does not use the SSK library <clears throat> and then to demonstrate the power of SSK and to make the templates a little more versatile I redo them using SSK and add some extra features okay. very cool All right. yeah, generally speaking and I'll, just, I'll be quiet after that but most of my templates come with multiple versions. I mean, there's only a few templates that are just single versions because they're too complicated to do over and over. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry, I'm folks still over here. Um, That's okay. We're all doing something different. I know it. Let's jump into the... Let's jump into the code sample. The rain code. The, the rain code. Rain code? Yeah, let's do the rain code first. We've right. got... Okay, so this week, this week we've got rain code... We have also have lightning code, and we may, if we have time, get not into the code for the floating, but we we should at least be able to cut, cut, give an overview of what it is, and we'll, we'll maybe talk about it next time. So we've kind of we're on kind of a li liquid kick here. We've got, we've got raining and lightning and floating. So get your get your arcs ready. Um, okay, so here's the here's the code for this particular one. This is uh this one is. From Corona Ambassador uh, Vladimir Sergeyev. Did I do that right, Ed? <laughs> Don't ask me. <laughs> uh, we talked about this before the show and couldn't quite be sure we were saying his name right. Right. So, we, so if if uh, if Ed made me made me mess it up, it's uh, it's all his fault. And uh, <laughs> and but this is a great little piece of code. Uh, it's not on his website anymore. I think I don't know if his website just went down or, or what. I think we're all kind of having some issues here. Um, but anyway, we kind of wanted to go through this and show how it, how it works. Um, so essentially, it starts with every you know every Corona project starts with the main.lua file. But we're gonna we're gonna jump over to the I guess the the library file if you will for this first before we come back. So um, let's look at the rain.lua file first and then we'll look at the main.lua file. So in, in the main.lua file it, it creates an instance of this rain ob uh, object and basically um, what that does if we kind of jump down to the constructor here um, maybe. I don't want to get too big, but then again, I don't want to cut off half the, the code there. Uh, but basically, in the constructor, you can you can, can pass a, a few things in when you create the, the rain object. You, you, cre you pass in a group, and you pass in some configuration settings. And I think that uh, I think well, the, the the configuration settings are all right here on the on the in the code. But I think that they were documented on his website as well. Uh, but but essentially you you are uh, passing in the group here. 
go ahead and grab in that, and then do a couple of things with the uh, configuration. You're grabbing a couple of settings here. The first, the first thing you're grabbing or, or calculating really is this, uh, is the, is the, what am I doing there? Oh, the angle, the angle with which we want the rain to, to, to fall at or to come in at. So you can almost have it like it's. Uh, Charles, why don't you run the app so everybody can see what it, it is that it's doing, and then I think it'll make the code a little bit. Okay. More understandable. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good idea. Good idea. Hold on. Let me bring that up. Sorry, I've seen the. You're right. I've seen the uh, thing so many times. <laughs> that that angle will make a lot more sense if if we can see it. The angle that's happening with the with the rain. Uh, We're still just seeing your code. Yeah. Hold on. I'm playing musical screen share now. <laughs> Have you got it running? Oh shoot. No, you don't. <laughs> the thing is, is the uh, raindrops may not show up well, Charles. Okay, can you yeah, see I that? Can, I can barely see them. It, it's not real clear, but it is there. It the, the rain's a lighter gray on the black background. Just you know, it's raining at night, so when when you're looking at this, you you need to see it for, for what it is, but the rain rain's going there at a what a forty five degree angle from top right corner to the bottom left. That and that should help make the code a lot more valuable to look at. And we even have the rain sound so that <laughs> I can hear the sound there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm actually trying to... Let's see here. Hold on. That's on uh, lines uh, 61, 62, I believe. You can turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go to the bathroom. It's, it's really, <laughs> really loud, especially when you're wearing headphones. <laughs> like, yeah. wow. Rain on uh, line 62. You can just comment that out. That should do it. Well, I rain... I, I just well, commented Not to rain out. on your parade or anything. But. And reload, of course. <laughs> well, here, I just commented it out in 70. Okay, thereabouts. Yeah, either way. I might okay. make changes. Okay, hold on. Hold <laughs> Not that on. Ed ever makes changes to no, I never make changes, that's right. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me do the screen share again. <laughs> okay, can you see that at all? Yes. Okay, it's very faint. You can, and yeah. I've actually, I've actually that, gone that in. That's a lot better. Yeah, I've actually gone in. It's not a frame rate. It's not dropping frame rate so much as I've actually gone in and... Uh, slow down the rain, right? So that you can actually see the drops, because it says it says in the code, you know, that, that you're you're creating raindrops, but what you're actually doing is you're creating lines, and then making those lines fall at an angle, or depending on what angle is passed into the actual configuration. And one of the interesting parts about this whole uh, piece of code is that you're not generating you're not generating the drops on the fly. You you go you loop through and generate a, a series of, of these lines, the drops, and then you kind of recycle them. So let's let's go back to the code and look at that for a second. Okay. Yeah. Huh. And now. Okay. So let's go back and look at this. Okay. So. It, Again, we're 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 creating an instance of, of rain. In our in our con uh, constructor, we're passing in the group, and then we're passing in configuration settings here. Okay, and if we don't have configuration settings, then then the, you know the handy dandy or is 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 used a lot here uh, in Lua. So we're either passing in an angle, or we're just setting it to a default of 45. Uh, we can make it rain left or right. So here we're making it rain uh, right. So we want the essentially the drops to start at the right-hand corner of the screen and fall to the left, to the bottom left. Um, we can also control the speed. Like I said, I, I, I slowed the drops down so that we could actually see them on the screen. Uh, but you can control the speed of your rain. So if you want it to be a, a complete downpour, you can just make it a, you know, as fast as you want. Um, and then we set some things like uh, where's the floor, 
So basically, where when do the raindrops kind of fall off the, the screen? When do they? Because um, you can set, you can bring in if you wanted to. You can bring in a ground uh, scenery and stuff like that. So your floor doesn't necessarily have to be the bottom of your um, device. It can be the bottom of you know a bottom edge of the ground or, or whatever, right? Depending on what story you're trying to tell. Uh, the other thing is how kind of some basic things about the drops, like how do you want the drops to look? Do you want them to be long drops or do you want them to be fat drops? Do you want it to be kind of uh, like just distance in the background? So if you can control the alpha and bring it down, do you want them to be kind of faint? Kind of maybe off, rain, maybe is the rain off in the distance or is it up in your face? Uh, and you can also control the color of the rain. So I suppose if you wanted to do some sort of apocalyptic rain, you could, you could do that as well. If you your... want to rain fire, you just change it. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> that's a good idea. And then, uh, and then, the, 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 so the important part here is this uh, rain count, this drop count. So you have how many drops do you want the thing to generate? And the default is 50, but you can do less or more. Um, although when I, I played with it, and when you do more than 50, it didn't, it didn't really seem like I could tell a difference. Uh, well, this is using. Um, the uh, yeah, blanking on words all of a sudden. Uh, vertices, and and so we're actually creating new lines. You're not using a gra graphic. You're you're creating the line, which is very low usage of the processor. Uh, by by using the rasterized or the uh, the vertices for for our lines, it dramatically speeds up how quickly we can do this. If you were loading in a graphic image for each raindrop and trying to do it that way that would be a lot more memory intensive and a lot more processor intensive on your system. So this is a nice, sweet, easy way to do rain for your environment and not kill the processing speed or the frame rate on it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I thought it was a really smart way of doing it for sure. Um, so yeah, you get those 50 drops and then you just, you just flip through, like you said, and create those drops ahead of time. Um, and so you set their... Uh, where they're going to start on the screen. So basically here we're saying, uh, you know, the, the height of the screen, and then we're going to do plus 100, right? So we're going to somewhere off the screen. We don't want the raindrops start, starting right at the edge of the screen. We don't want them kind of falling in from somewhere uh, above our device, so to speak. And then uh, and then we set the, the angle at which the rain is going to fall. Not not necessarily what, what the rain, how the lines are um, positioned, but in what direction. So we're, 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 we're setting that because we're going to, as we go through here uh, on the inner frame, it's just going to run through over and over again and just update the values of our, um, of our drops. And as it does that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to update that and move it down the screen. So uh, the other thing that I noticed here was that when, you, when we ran the example, the drops were kind of staggered and had this sort of a, a random feel to them, almost like they were you know, raindrops, real raindrops. But if you took out this, if you actually went in here and put a extra com, uh, dash there and actually commented out that dy, uh, which is what we we did right here, you you actually got a more uniform set of drops that were all lined up next to each other, and then those came down the screen in one big unified sheet, like they were marching, all marching down the screen. So so uh, so this was pretty. That's a pretty important line right there for the, the overall visual effect. Um, let's see, what was this? Uh, what else is here? So, okay, yeah, so right, we, we just uh, draw our line. Um, so we're not using a graphic or anything like that. We're just... Yeah, just using the new line command. Yep, and, uh, and then we're setting our initial position of each drop. So again, we're flipping through. We're going to do this. This is going to flip through 50 times and generate each new little dash or no little line that's there to simulate our raindrop and it's going to set the position of each one of those as it flips through here and then it's going to take whatever those uh, configuration settings that we passed in earlier and apply those right so it's going to um, it's, it's going to give it a name and it's also going to set the width and the alpha and the color and then it's going to insert, insert a, all that into the group that was passed in originally so if we kind of scroll back up here a little bit we passed in a group as part of one of our parameters, and then we take and we we say, okay, um, you know, whatever group that was, we want to we want to assign that to our object. So, uh, and so we take and we insert that drop into the group. 
So, that's, so I think this is kind of kind of cool. So, and then we've got sound. So, like, it checks the settings on your device or your configuration settings, rather, and says, you know, hey, do we play the sound or do we not play the sound? And if we do, we we have a little rain wave that plays, and it kind of sells the the effect. You know, uh, I've heard it said that, hey, there, there you go. Uh, it's it's got the marching patterns, and ooh, dude, it's colorful too. Yeah, I, I'm playing with all the settings. That he's going nuts with the settings there. He's I got a randomized color. And <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's easier to show this way. And it you. randomized the uh, drop width on each creation, so they all come out a little different. You can't really yeah. see that lined up. But let me uh, get rid of the thing here and reload. Now they come out a different, and you can see how they're different widths. So now it's just, Yeah. So now it almost so, looks uh, like mine is 62 for you. I modified that by randomizing it. Oh, cool! For the the drop width. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So that yeah, that even sells the effect a little more, right? Because now you've got variety as opposed to all being the same. Uh, yeah, I've heard it said that you know you can have the best visual effects uh, possible, but the audio is really what sells it, right? If somebody comes along and says that was a great party. You know, <laughs> it doesn't sell it like, man, that was the best party ever. So but you're, uh, you're making a good point for video games. Uh, set people look at, overlook it until the end, or they don't yeah. do it at all. But sound is crucial. Yeah, it sells it. I mean, like it, like we were saying earlier, if we didn't turn the the sound off on the the code sample, we would all be wanting to go to the bathroom. So it sells it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and that went out. Okay, cut. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so then it, then we add a an event lister and uh, for inner frame. So basically, every 30 frames a second or um, 60 frames a second, depending on how we've got our configuration set up, then we're going to loop through and, and basically hit our rain handler. So uh, let's go up to our rain handler. Um, and our rain handlers are right up here, just right at the top, and we just pass in our event. Uh, and really the, the interesting part here is that we're going to flip through the group. So we're going we're gonna to flip through the group. And we're going to look at all the children, all the uh, was it objects, they're, they're children of that group, and then we're going to, uh, to, to do something to them. We're going to figure out whether they're a raindrop, which I guess if you had multiple... Help me with this, Brian. I guess if you had multiple things in your group, I mean, like in this pure example, we're just generating raindrops. If you wanted raindrops to rain cats, group. yeah. If you wanted cats, dogs, and raindrops, this would <laughs> distinguish the the raindrops. <laughs> if raindrop is cat, <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I like it. It's creative. Uh, so there you go. So now you can, yeah, you can discern which one's which, and then if that is a raindrop, then we're gonna we're gonna stuff it into this. Um, or, or actually, we're gonna go through and we're going to uh, check. And see has the raindrop fallen off the screen or not? And if it if it has, if it's gone beyond our floor, whatever our rain floor was, right? Because we said it doesn't necessarily have to be the bottom of the device; it can be our ground, or or, or a building skyline, or whatever it is, right? Um, once it's fallen beyond that point, then we want to go ahead and update the raindrop coordinates. We want to set them probably back up to the upper right hand corner someplace, so the whole process can start over again. So, like I said before, we're not we're not generating new raindrops. We're just recycling. It's it's very green. <laughs> we're recycling. We're the saving old, bits. <laughs> we're, we're recycling the old raindrops and, and moving them around. And uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm, I've got it backwards. This one's actually move. This is the part where it's actually moving the raindrops down the screen, and this one is actually setting it back up to the upper right hand corner. So if they've if they haven't uh, fallen down beyond the floor, then we want to just march them on down the screen. And if they have, then we want to start it all over again and move them back up to the upper right-hand corner. You're joking about this part a little bit, but it's a, a smart move because it saves a lot of creation time. And and all the little uh, Lua cleanup of all the deletions you'd end up doing if you were to create and delete raindrops over and over and over. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right, because each, uh, each one would have to be an object that you'd have to then... Uh, nil out or you know clear up and then free up the memory for and start all over again. But this is yeah, Which why do that? No big in this uh, no big deal in this example, and Corona can definitely handle it. 
It's just that if you've got a lot of things going on, this is a little tiny optimization you could do that would help just that much, right? Oh yeah, because this could this could be applied to anything else, right? I mean, it could be applied to. Uh, I mean, this is rain, but it could be applied to enemies or any kind of other objects that you you know you're going to reuse. Um, and and again, yeah, like you said, I mean, that's a good point. This this example is is very specific, right? We're generating rain. We're we're we've got some audio to sell the effect, and that's all we're doing in the the example. So uh, there could be a whole bunch of other things going on. In a, in a full size app. So, all right. So let's go back to main.lua. So in, in, in main.lua, we've got all that in the, in the rain.lua file. So we've got all that supporting uh, library stuff there. And then in the main.lua, we just come in, we grab our screen dimensions, uh, hide that pesky uh, status bar, create that group that we're going to pass in to um, to the rain function there, and then. And then just to kind of set the scene, we create a gradient um, and give it some color information and which way we want the gradient to be and all that. Uh, and then we add that. Uh, we create a, a new rectangle and we add that. Um, we set the we set the fill color to that gradient and then we add all that to the group. Okay. So then when we've got all that kind of kind of the stage is all set, um, then we bring in our rain library. And we pass in our, our parameters, which is the group itself. And uh, since in this example we're not passing any parameters, we just pass in an empty table. So it's really all very simple. I mean, once you kind of walk through all the pieces and understand how it's functioning, it's it's very it's a very clean example. Do you guys have anything else you want to say about that one? It's very efficient. Um, this is a if you wanted to add some rain effects to a game that you're working on, that's, this is a nice, simple way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I think I, I mean, I want to play with that just to kind of take some of that uh, concepts there and use it for other things, too. It doesn't have to be rain. Uh, okay. So let's go and look at the lightning. Give me a second while I pull that up here. Uh, lightning. Now, Brian, where does this lightning code come from? Tell me that while I'm... Um, you know, I'd, I'd read a little bit about making lines to uh, randomize a line going from one place to another location, and it really um, uh, inspired me. And if you go to the special effects uh, uh, folder, you can see that I, the lightning sound effect I, I got from uh, Zoltan Sarinsky, um, but the, the actual code itself was just simply inspired from seeing several different... Uh, ideas that that I had seen um, used in in several apps, so I, I really liked what they had been doing and thought, hey, let's let's try and do this. And I'm I'm actually I'm working on a little bit of a game that has all kinds of special effects, fireballs, lightning bolts, and you know all, all the the great RPG type special effects that you, you just simply need inside that type of an environment. So. Um, yeah, if you hit, just tap on the screen there, it'll shoot the lightning bolt. Wow. And and th this is supposed to be player <laughs> one, player two. Uh, and actually, I've got it set for five levels of lightning bolts. So based upon what you're passing in, will it will change how big the lightning bolt is going from point A to point B. Okay, I apologize to anybody who's wearing headphones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you might want to go to the special effects and... and comment out the the play line um, it's let's see the original play was line 24 24 yeah there it, it is kind of loud for headphones <laughs> I just realized that uh, here, go back to and nobody here. ever came back to the show because they were all deaf that's right <laughs> it's, it's really it was really loud I mean, I mean if you were if you were sitting at your desk at work and you, and you just soiled yourself, send us an email. <laughs> let us know. <laughs> if you thought you were being stealthy listening to this, well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If you just fell out of your chair, just tell your, your coworkers, you know, you're... So excited about your work. Yeah, you're so excited <laughs> about your work. All right, so there, there's the lightning bolt without the sound. <laughs> and, and that's a level one lightning bolt. And it's and it's random every time, right? 
Uh, well, the start point and end point is not right. random. Right. But the and I'm just simply having it draw from the center of each object, uh, and and then the the actual direction is slightly randomized as it goes across the screen. Okay, and so I'm going to change the uh, lightning detail to uh, five. Yeah, that, that's the big bolt. Yeah, let's let's and we're gonna turn the sound buck on. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, no, we don't <laughs> want to do that. And I do have a different sound effect. For for each level, so that you know it's a bigger boom for. Yeah. So, yeah. There you can see it's a much bigger. Yeah, I actually hoped we would be able to play these because they're kind of they're they're interesting. But this again, the sound sells the effect because this one is a lot deeper, and I'll try to I'll try to um, I'll try to do the voice of it's a lot deeper and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and sounds like you know more of a distant lightning. And then there's a few of them. I think number two is more of like a zap. It's the yeah. it's, it's the taking the clothes out of the dryer and you know getting you got shocked getting getting zapped sort of thing. I mean it's real short, real uh, to the point. Uh, even though you know, I mean the the size of the lightning bolt, you know, kind of again it, it it gives you a visual, but it's the sound that sells it. Um, right. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at the code then on this. And again, just like the rain uh, for this, I, I have the main program and then I put all the special effects or I'm putting all the special effects into their own uh, external file just simply to make it a little bit cleaner for the development. Okay. Do you want to mm -hmm. go to the special effects first? or? Uh, yeah, let's go to the special effects first since we require that right off the bat. Okay, hold on. Okay. Uh you see. All right, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me and me uh, All right. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need and copyright right really doesn't apply. I didn't copyright this. It, that was just thrown in there by uh, the project manager. So if somebody wants to use this, they're welcome to it. Um I'll, we'll we'll delete that before we put it out there on GitHub. Okay. And yeah, here's my function, draw lightning, um, and you just got start point, end point, and uh, what color is going to be passed, this place, and what level of lightning is it going to to shoot out. Okay. So X1, Y1 is start location, X2, Y2 is end location, um, displace is, is how much variance there's going to be. In the lightning bolt, which I, I don't do a lot of that, but um, it, it is the detail level, the glow around the lightning strike, and of course RGB sets the color of the lightning strike. So if you wanted it to be red, green, blue, or or white, or black, or whatever is appropriate for your game, you you, you know you're doing a Star Wars or something, maybe you you need different shades of the lightning shooting out of the evil person's hands or something. Um, <laughs> So showing my geekness here. Um, and then, of course, level, as I mentioned, is how big is the bolt. Okay. And so this is all, again, using new line, just like with the rain. I don't do any recycling with this since each bolt is created at the time and is randomized the way it is. Um, but you can see we, we just create the glow around um, using new line. And that's based off of... The line is going at a uh, a jagged line as it goes across the screen. The new line is is how much area is coming off of that line, and so I'm actually adding a line to the line to give the glow effect or the bigger effect. So it it does that. Is that is that what gives it the fuzzy part? Yes. Okay. That that the glow is the fuzzy. And how does it how does it do that? I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, we're cr yeah. we're creating the new line, uh -huh. and then we're um, we we of course set the color to whatever has been passed in, right. and then the width is up to 15 pixels times the level, and then we divide it by i as we're going through. So it's it's going through and adjusting the fuzziness around the line as it goes through. So you can you could play with this all day long and do all kinds of neat things. Oh, okay. See, I was, I was, I, I had it in my mind that it was. 
I don't know, kind of like a you know a pipe cleaner. It looks like it has these little hairs yeah, that come that, off of it. That's basically what this is doing. It's it's creating a line off of this. If, if to use your uh, pipe cleaner analogy, which is actually perfect for this, it, the you've got the metal part of the pipe cleaner, and then you've got the fuzzy bristles coming off. The this for loop is creating the fuzzy coming off the main line. Gotcha. Okay. All right, then, then what we got? Let's um, see here. Then, of course, we're drawing the actual bolt itself, the, the main part, and, and how thick that's going to be is based upon the level as well. So how many pixels it is in its width is based upon the level. So 5 will be, which is the big bolt, is up to 10 pixels in width. Um, the, a 1 would just be 2 pixels in width. Okay. And then... Below, it, this is the randomization. This is what is drawing the line so it looks jagged. So we're, we're actually just simply drawing a little chunk of the line at a time and then using a randomize between 0 and 1 of how much that line is displaced as it goes across. And that's the, the variable displaced. You know, I like to use good variable names. So how much is it displaced as it's going across? And, and as I said, this was inspired by other um, similar projects where they were jag drawing jagged lines between point A and point B that I'd seen in the forums on Corona. Um, and I'd seen several of them, so put this all together to make the lightning. Okay, so you, I, I think I'm catching up now because we're, we're, we're in the draw lightning function here, so this, at some right. point we're going to call this somewhere. And uh, like you said, we're, we're just creating little pieces of the line at, at, at different times. So, yes, yeah, okay. we're doing just sh very short segments eventually ah. getting from point A to point B. But, but as we're going through, I, I don't really care where it's at as it's going through in the middle part. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the randomization, where we're using math.random to uh, displace the line as it's going through. Gotcha. Now, what's the what's the difference between, between uh, I guess? The current, current detail and displace? Current. Yeah. Well, that that's where it's going through, and... It's um, it, as you can see, it, it's been created randomly to go through here, and, and we're calling displace divided by two to call it. The, oh, this is a no. self-calling routine. I, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, let me say that differently. Uh, just conceptually, what's the difference between current detail and and displace? I, I kind of get what displace is, but what's just current that? That's detail. for drawing the the fuzzy area around, oh, okay. and, and and getting it from point A to point B. So the, the displace is how much is it displaced because, you know, if it gets too far off, we need to pull it back up so that it's headed back towards the point that we want it to get to. Okay. Okay, so we're, all, so we're trying to keep, like you say, we're trying to keep it jagged but not so far that it looks like some kind of line graph, something or other. Some right, and the, and the next version of this, I'm going to make it so that it, the lightning will actually fork as it's getting closer to the end and no, cool. I think that'll be a really neat effect. I, I just haven't had time to work on that. I'll let Ed work on that since he likes to change everybody's code. <laughs> He's already got it done. <laughs> I'm coding away frantically as we speak, but not on that. <laughs> because I don't have this code. I got something else for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Show us. Uh, two seconds and I'll have it ready for you. Okay. okay. So We're we can go back to the so main. I don't, ruin, I don't want to ruin the effect here. Okay. Let's, let's jump back to the main then to, to show the call. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So here we've got our main. Um, load up the special effects by doing our require. And um, then we're just simply, I, I create my two robots in this case. I call them bot one and bot two, or, or rectangles as they may appear on the screen. Um, and then we can set the level of detail and the lightning level um, for how it's going to shoot out. These are all variables that you can do to make it a little bit more interesting. And then we can call the special effects draw lightning to actually do it, which is the um, on the touch. When a touch event happens, it'll shoot lightning. Very cool. And, and you throw in a performance delay there just to keep it from... Just so it doesn't, yeah, it, it, it doesn't um, disappear com too quickly. Um, and as you can see, uh, and this is getting into a little bit more advanced uh, programming, I'm, because the fact that I'm calling it the way that it's being called, 
it the timer if if you, I mean <laughs> this is a little bit more advanced concept in programming we had to use a closure to in the perform with delay if we didn't use a closure I'm actually passing a parameter inside the the perform with delay when you pass a parameter in a perform with delay it cause it there's no delay um, Corona immediately says oh there's a, uh, a function that has to be executed and look there's a parameter inside that function do it right now so that you don't get any delay to get around that you can create a closure which is where you declare a function and, and basically you know this is a one-line function from function through end here that that is a function fully self-contained and the perform with delay calls that function in this case I can do the passing to remove the lines from the new group and that's and that's right so, here and that and that and, and I, I do a much better job of describing uh, closures in the beginning mobile application development um, I, I'd forgotten that I used a closure in this so I wasn't prepared to, to talk about it but um, <laughs> but but I, I use closures in chapter 16 of the beginning mobile application development with Corona uh, for a similar type game where it's a tower defense style game and we had to use closures to be able to do it cool but if you want to, you can always you can do a search on Lua.org or the Corona site on using closures. There's tons of information out there on closures. Can you tell us what you're doing here with the uh, with this part? Uh, yeah, that, that's going to the the current stage to remove the lines. And, and current stage represents what? The 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 actual the uh, line on the stage. The the what we're drawing with the line. Almost like our kind of a canvas sort of thing, right? So, like, yeah. like what, we're, what we're drawing right. on. Okay, so right. what we're but we're saying rem remove three. So is it removing what? Uh, object. I think that's object three. Like I said, I wrote this about eight or nine months ago. So oh, I, oh, oh come on! Um, I know. <laughs> Should have commented it a lot better. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, oh. it's to remove the lines. Okay, so basically, it's just going in and cleaning up the lines. It's so that the yeah, it's so that the you don't just flash the lightning up there and it's instantly gone. This slows down so that you can actually see it and and have the effect. Oh, cool! Very nice. Uh, okay, well okay. there we go. I'm Let's ready. Ed's got something for us. Ed, Ed, over yeah, to you. Ed. Uh, you go ahead and show my screen if you can, or. Don't make yours the primary. All right, because I see. You, you made the joke. <laughs> okay. oh, no. I modified the rain. <laughs> okay, hopefully I get this working. <laughs> you can believe it. Using that cat sounds. <laughs> can you hear that? I can hear the sound, yeah. Cats and dogs falling. <laughs> So there's my contribution to the show. I think I think we should publish the source code just like that. Well, we'll post it. Yeah, I'll, I'll provide the code. Oh, that's hilarious! That is hilarious. That's too much. No, where did you get the? You did that so quickly. Where did you get the sounds for that? Oh yeah, that's not fair. Um, you have a library full of uh of cat and dog sounds. Uh, hold on, let me screen share. No, I. As you know, I wrote some books previously on uh, oh. the Torque Game Engine. Yeah. yeah. So I did a, a 3D example of raining cats and dogs, and I thought that would be just too funny to do that real quick in Corona. So I stole the um, sound assets that I used for that from my... Because I keep all my published stuff on my disk somewhere. Right. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. That's funny. That is funny. All right. Uh, okay, so we've got rain, we've got lightning. Uh, let's we don't we're not going to have time to go through it, but let's look at the real quickly at the video for the next examples. Uh, we're going to talk next week about buoyancy, and let me just pull it up here. Give me just a second. Uh, come on. All right, let me screen share. These are great examples. And I know you guys have probably seen these, but we want to walk through the code of them. Um, let me 
So here's, you know, these five blocks have fallen into the water, and you can mess with them and stack them on top of each other and move them around, and they just float back up to the top. You can drag them down to the bottom and float back up to the top. Now, uh, there was another example. Let me, let me see who... Who did this come from? This You're giving away the secret sauce if you show the next example. Oh, do you want you want me to hold the next example? No, no, that's cool. Just uh, I hope you have the debug stuff turned off. Otherwise, uh, you'll be able to see it, and those who are know what's going on will be able to intuit how this works. Intuit. All right. Well, let me look at the. Let me let me look at it real quick here. Hold on. I got it. I got. I can bring it up. Turn off okay. hybrid mode. I will. Hold on. The next example is. Uh, it's kind of the similar thing, uh, but it's it's got some extra features to it that I think are kind of cool. Hold on, just a second. I got code all over the place. That's what you get for having three monitors. I know it. Oh, there it is. It's in front of me. Turn off the hybrid mode. You said okay. Turn off the. Yes, hybrid. please do. All right. Leave some secrets for next week. <laughs> There's a comment in there somewhere, and I'm not going to oh. go in there. All right, there we go. Look. Can you see it? Okay, good enough. Let me make my... Well, that's, well, I, that's what I did. I turned the hybrid yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I forgot that they rendered the blocks. Oh, right, right, right. So uh, so this one's a little different. The, when you... You, uh, you can't pick this guy up like you could the other blocks, but you can spawn these little blocks of different sizes... And if you, I don't know if you can see that on the screen. And it's not nearly as impressive because the frame rate's real low here on Google+. Plus. But some of those little ones, they go shooting out like a, like a piece of straw in a tornado or something. I mean, they're just... We should address that as we modify the uh, code next week. Yeah, I think it'd be w worth playing with. And you can, you, know, you can come in here and make a big block. So sometimes I... <laughs> the first time I started messing with this, I just... Do that again? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not a game per se, but you can have a lot of fun with it. It's different every time. It's a good thing, though. It's a good thing when you're playing with a piece of code like this, and suddenly you start having fun with like a piece of the mechanic. Yeah, yeah. Now That's you know. That's a right there. Exactly. Yeah, it's worth it's worth doing something with. Yeah, because I got you know you wind up with a whole mess full of stuff, and then you're like, okay, well, I'm just gonna push all that down the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, just push all that down. There we go. Right, do now. do the, set, the special effect again, too. <laughs> Let's record that and have that be a, the creation effect, okay? Yeah, we will. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. I will do that. So how, all right. uh, how fast is it? How's it? How fast is it for, for a game to make an actual game? Is it rendering pretty fast, or...? Oh yeah, it's it's yeah, it runs fine. I mean, there's uh, like I said, the only thing that you're seeing is a little, you know, the frame rate stinks on Google Plus, but it works great. Okay, because uh, I saw something uh, similar, but I don't know if they use it. Um, this buoyancy uh, effect. It was like this penguin that jumped into the water and then, you know, uh, basically uh, go down to the sur to the surface and then come back. It was a certain time. But I don't remember what, what was if it would really look good or not. But this is probably perfect for that kind of game. Yeah, there was a, can, yeah. There, well, there was another one, and uh, uh, give it just a second here. I pulled it up. Ed, you sent this one over, and it was um, pretty interesting looking. Um, hold on. Uh, come on with the screen share. Oh no. Okay, I'll bring right up if you, can't. you know which one I'm talking about? Yeah. The wa ripples. water ripples? Yeah, let me load it. Yeah, my screen share died. It we won't even respond. This one was I'd like to combine this with that other one there. Okay, here it comes. Hopefully it'll come through. Yeah. See it? Yeah, there we go. So in this example, what they did was uh, this guy, he, he looked at a guy's, um, another person's uh, academic paper on how to simulate ripples or how ripples would be simulated and then he implemented it 
sort of just like ripped the uh, the algorithms right out and implemented it in Corona. So yeah, um, I may have modified it. Yeah, unfortunately, I modified it. You used to be able to drop, I think, a block or something, but you could make the water ripple. Yeah, if you just move yeah. your yeah, if you just move your cursor around. Yeah. So the thrust of what's going on here is, is each of these elements is actually like a single line. And he's doing a on-the-fly calculation that says, if I have something displacing this line, how much water goes into the nearby lines, and how much do they change their height? So it, it's yeah. a little more detailed than that, but I thought that was a pretty cool little, uh, you know, how they did this. Yeah, so I think I think what we should do is just go ahead and share out the we'll share out the links to that those examples because we won't walk through all of those. But sure, I can put that code up and then uh, put the source link in there and stuff. Yeah, but uh, next time I definitely want to walk through uh, the buoyancy examples and, and stuff like that. So yeah, that won't go up in this week's post. Although um, Brian, I, well, we could talk after the show. I'd like to grab your code if possible and put it on the GitHub. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's let's announce our T-shirt winner, and then we'll we'll bounce out of here. So uh, this week's T-shirt winner is Tony Morelli. Tony uh, learned about Corona Geek off the Corona Labs website, and he follows us on Google. I'm assuming Google Plus, uh, or you can. You, it's totally acceptable to stalk us on uh, Google Alerts or Google Google Proper. That's okay too. Uh, so he's going to get a T-shirt sent to him. Uh, Corona. La uh, Corona Labs T-shirt sent to him, and he's also going to get a one-year subscription to App Developer Magazine. So, so congratulations, Tony, and thanks for supporting the show. If you'd like to get a uh, entered for a chance to win a T-shirt and hopefully get a uh, get that sent to you, go on over to CoronaGeek.com/giveaway, fill out the form, tell us how you heard about Corona Geek and uh, where you follow us on social media, and if we draw your name from the uh, hat, then we'll send you a T-shirt. So it's that simple. All right, you guys got anything else you want to talk about before we leave? It's time. A quick question. Uh, last minute. Quick question. Yeah. Brian, um, was this uh, zapping effect uh, that you had was great. Um, do you think it would be possible to use it as a, let's say, um, where you cross your fingers uh, across the, the screen like, in, like a ninja effect, ninja, a fruit effect, whatever it's called? Is that, is oh, that possible? Uh, to use like a swipe of effect yeah. or something yeah. like that? Is that fast enough for it? I think it is. Okay. I haven't I'll tried try, that, but I don't know why. Know. It should be fast enough to be able to do that. Okay. I'll try it and let you know. I, I, was, trying to, yeah, go I, was, ahead. I was trying to I was trying to do that ninja thing you were <laughs> I couldn't imagine what it looked like until you said the fruit. I was like, oh, yeah, fruit ninja, fruit ninja, right. Yeah. It's my French over there. <laughs> my English is not that good. <laughs> Neither is mine. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for this week. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it, and uh, be sure to join us next week when we'll, we'll go through the buoyancy code. And until then, have a great week and happy coding. See you. Another question. <laughs>